God's success is saving. Our success is sharing. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group, part three of this five-part series, The End of the Mission. Today, we talk about the success of our mission. It's really important to find out what is the barometer, what is the measuring stick that we use, our rubric for what we consider to be success. I love God's vision. I love his version because it puts all of the burden on him and all the blessing comes to us. Because when you read here, for example, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2 to 3, this is Paul talking to the church at Corinth where he says, for I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy because he has espoused us to one husband that he can present us as a chaste virgin to Christ. This was Paul's burden as a minister of God because it is God's burden for us as our creator. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Remember, we were talking about this in the previous lesson, the simplicity of 1 Timothy chapter 2, that there is one God and his son, our mediator, Jesus Christ. Here is what he's fearful. God is fearful that we'll miss this boat, as was Paul. But in that, that fear, again, that's relieved by the truth for which we can bow or which we can base our faith on. And, and, and knowing now that, that God has done the heavy lifting of espousing us, he says, I will make sure that you are clean. I will make sure that you are chaste. I will sanctify you just as much as I have saved you. I will do that work in you and for you. Now, if that's God's work, take a look here in Luke chapter four, verses 18 through 19 to get a better picture now of our success. God does the saving. But it says here, Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So God says, now I have done the work of saving you, but I've also done the work of sending you. I need you to respond by sharing. It's no different than what he did with Jesus. Jesus says that the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of God is upon me. Now the father is in me, empowering me to do all those things that are listed there in Luke chapter four. They are no different than what God desires to do through us. As he gives us his spirit and abides in us, he wants to do the same sharing that he did through his son. In fact, it's because of his son, it's because of the sacrifice of Christ that we now can qualify for the call. In Hebrews chapter three, verses 12 to 13, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it's called today. Exhort one another, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. There it is. God has given us the gift of salvation through Christ. And now all he asks is that we advertise and that we share. In this case, in this context, it says that, that we should exhort one another every day, remind everybody every day that Jesus saves and that God is love. As we do this, it keeps our heart from hardening. And more importantly, it keeps other people's hearts from hardening. What they do with their decision, again, that's their decision. But this is the time to decide, not tomorrow. And so again, I hope this encourages us to see that what God has assured us is that we will be successful in sharing as much as he has been already successful in saving us. If we put our trust, the same trust that it takes for us to believe in what he has done, take that same faith now to believe in what he will do by the power and presence of his spirit in us to share what he's already done.